So it's all about open source technologies and DevOps. Now, this is something which is my forte. And what I've seen since morning is most of the sessions are around WordPress and the thing, right? So before I proceed, I would like to know from you people, what is your expectation from this session? Why are you here, basically? Anyone? What are you looking for from this session? Any takeaways? What you want to know? You want to know about to learn about DevOps or cloud, open source? Anyone? Cool. Then I'll share my agenda and you see if it aligns with what you are looking for. So what we are going to discuss is uh, brief about the so-called DevOps. It's a buzzword in the industry, right? So what is this all about? Uh, what is the benefit of using DevOps or if organizations adopt DevOps, how are they going to benefit? Then there are different stages for DevOps. So we are going to just go through them. And for me, the key thing is the people who are working into open source, there are a lot of DevOps and WordPress teams which are open source available free teams. So I would like to share from a DevOps pipeline what are some of the commonly used softwares which are available open source where you don't have to pay. So this is what I'm going to cover in my couple of slides. So does that align with your team? No energy, I think it was a tea break, right? People are back from tea, snacks, coffee. Cool. So let's start about DevOps. Uh, but before I proceed, uh, this is something which is like recent shift in the software paradigm. Right? DevOps is what? Some buzzword that has been there around 4 to 5 years. Before that, we had a typical SDLC model where you used to follow the agile model, big release cycles, complex codes, one monolithic software. Now we have microservices, automation, everything. So, how was the pre DevOps era? So, basically, we used to have a software team for a developer. So, this is a typical software developer. He used to do a lot of coding. He is a nerd guy. Nothing else in his life. It's all about code and work. And he used to code. Once the code is done, and you have your what, bundle software app, app ready, that's the tab of war file for deployment. The management says, yes, we are good to go. Yes? So this was one side of it when we talk about DevOps. We saw the developer. There's another type to it, that's the ops which we typically used to call as system admins. So what was the feeling of system admins and his team when the developer is doing this job? I think something similar to this. They used to pray, because they are not sure what the developer is doing, but he is going to deploy this into their production. If something breaks, it will be a headache for the demo, uh, the system admins. Now they are called DevOps, but yeah, they are system admins. They know nothing about the code part, no offense, any uh, system admin here, but then yeah. They didn't think about the code part, what went wrong, but it's their bucket to fix it, how to do it. Now the management tells you, if everything is all ready, we have tested the QA, UAT, everything is all done, let's, let's do a deployment, right? What possibly could go wrong? Does deployment go wrong? No. We are all tested, we have tested all the scenarios, corner cases, everything is all covered. Nothing could go wrong. We do a deployment. Normally, this is a scenario that I have seen in my like, career. Most of the times, deployments used to go wrong due to some of the other reason. It's not always because of the code. Could be buggy code, infrastructure, third party softwares. Nowadays, we use what tools like Docker. So, third party Docker images, vulnerabilities over to there. So, it could be anything, and we are not sure. But deployment goes for a toss. So, this is where DevOps comes to your rescue nowadays. I have to keep a tab of time also, yes. Just have 25 minutes to cover all those things. So when the deployment fails, there is a never ending fight between dev and the ops. It's the blame game that we normally know, right? It was your fault, it was your fault, and yeah, it continues. No one is ready to accept their mistake or the fault. So this is a typical scenario most of the developers or the people who are from a developing background, they will associate with this. It used to run on my machine but didn't work in a production environment, I'm not too sure what went wrong, right? It 
it's a common use I think doctor solves that problem to a certain extent that if you run some new machine and any machine that supports doctor it should run on doctor's link on that machine also but this was a typical scenario everything is on fire and you are like okay what can I do it was not my mistake so now DevOps comes to rescue as a superhero Uh, so I will not deep dive basically into what all DevOps is all about, but just try to cover the essence of it. What is typically a DevOps life cycle, what are typical tools which are required, and what are the open source options which are available. So with DevOps, there are different definitions, different people say it differently. Some say it's all about tool, some people say it's all about culture, some people say it's all about developers getting smarter with automation. Other people say system admin should be more smarter to understand code. So if you see from a larger perspective, each one has their own definition. So it's something like this, the confusion is there. So everyone has their own definition of DevOps. It's a feature, it's a culture, it's an infrastructure as a code, it's collaboration between teams, it's all about automation. So yes, from my viewpoint, I think DevOps is all about this. It's not one single thing, it's not only culture, it's not only collaboration, it's not only automation, it's not CI, CD, it's not Puppet, Ansible, Chef, Terraform, AWS. This is the end point implementation. And that's where we talk about DevOps life cycle. There are different cycle, uh, life stages associated with the life cycle which you will go. And then for each stage or life cycle, you will see what are the alternate open source options available for you. So benefits of DevOps, if you see at a high level, you have fewer failures, better experiences, faster updates, faster deployments, faster deployments, if you are able to catch up errors at a high level or initial levels, that is the left shift principle that we follow, so definitely more reliable production, right? Shorter dev cycles, lower risk, efficiency, those are some of the benefits which I have covered, I think, later on. So this is a CIO insight uh, data that I have got. Uh, I think this is a bit one year old, 2018 data. So the benefits for organizations that have implemented DevOps is kind of underlined. So increased frequency of software development, 53%, so more than 53% or 50% organizations feel their frequency of software development has increased or improved. Correct. Increased collaboration, 48%. New software services, 35%. A reduction in spending, cost spending. So 46%, that's a good number for you. So why do you feel a reduction in spending? <coughs> Any answers? How do you save on money? Anyone from the management, higher management, who is all about money saving and those things, they should have an answer, right? Your uh, 
production engineers or your system admins. So that cyber was always the issue. No one knows about what the other team is doing. With the advent of DevOps, this thing is kind of broken and this was necessary. And this is where we talk about DevOps as a culture, breaking the silos. Faster deployment cycle, obviously, with uh, tools like uh, CI/CD implementation, Jenkins, and those kind of things. Uh, earlier deployment cycles, if you go through the data, deployment used to happen once a month or twice a month. That was the kind of ratio that we had. And it was a big bank event. Entire team used to like, prepare, it was used to be a big festival. Everyone is at the system, and it's like deployment is happening, we have to do it. Now, with the coming of CD, what Sir mentioned, right? Continuous delivery. Every now and then, every now, every hour, companies like Twitter, Facebook, Flipkart, those are doing continuous deployments and deliveries. Different features, different teams, but back end, front end, things are changing per minute. So, thousands of deployments per minute is happening, but we don't feel it. So, that is with, uh, with the use of technologies like DevOps or automation. Increased collaboration with three teams. So, yes, as the silos broke down, there was a better collaboration among different teams and team members, which basically led to more productivity in terms of organization output. So organization as a whole is performing better because each team is integrated and talking to each other, they know what is happening across the teams. Reduce time to market. So makes sense, your product, which used to take, like if there is a deployment that is happening once a month, different teams have to do different deployments, so it will take a couple of months to bring the product to market. If you have different deployments happening like at a rate of 10 deployments a day, within a week you are ready to go with your product. So that extends a reduced time to market. So product from an MVP phase to final customer service is all uh, that time cycle is reduced. Stable production environments. So with the advent of tools like uh, uh, the monitoring tools and logging tools that we will look into, you are able to catch up issues, production issues much faster. There is an alerting mechanism which alerts you as soon as there is a break in the production environment. There is a page duty alert, there is a slack alert, teams who are responsible, they take a responding action and they fix it immediately. Instead of like someone in US who will wake up at his hour, at different time zone, right? And then he will look into the issue, he will fix it up or inform the Indian team and then Indian team will do it next day. So because there is a delay of 24 hours. So that is again stable production environments where you are easily able to identify them and fix them at a much faster pace. Since uh, you are able to identify bugs and issues at a higher, at a faster level and fix them early, your quality of software is also improved. The final product that you get is much more improved than the initial one. And better utilization of resources. This is both with respect to your hardware and manpower. So, in terms of manpower, the people who are working the dev, the QA, they are all properly utilized effectively and also the hardware. You are not misusing or misconsuming the hardware. That was all about DevOps at a high level. And as I said, we will talk about different stages of DevOps or life cycle of DevOps. Um, so before I share, the slide talks about it, but I would like to know from you people, what are the stages you know or what are the stages you follow in your life cycle? Some of the stages that you know are aware of. I saw a couple of sessions where people are talking about certain stages. Come on, guys are WordPress developers, right? They do a lot of development, they work in organization, they have their own agenda and process. So what process do you follow? And it's there on the slides. So even if you can read, if you're smart, you can read and tell them. Like Git 
SVM and those kind of things which helps in source course management, right? That moves to the next level where you have Jenkins, which is the CI CD pipeline. And depending upon how tightly coupled is the Jenkins pipeline, you can do a lot of stuff with Jenkins and similar tools. Automated testing, integration testing, uh, if you are using something like Docker, security uh, scanning, uh, you can have a solar to the checkpoint quality and a lot of other things. If everything passes through Jenkins, you get a final build. And this build says that it is ready to be deployed because we have a lot of code and tested and everything in that Jenkins pipeline. So that's the second, CI CD pipeline is the second part. You do deployment through automation tools, if you have already achieved automation, something like Ansible and Terraform, that's the third level where you deploy. Right? After deployment, you need to monitor whether things went fine or there is a red flag. So definitely there is a monitoring solution. That's another life cycle. Apart from monitoring, you also do logging and alerting. So alert systems which tell you that there is an issue with the system. And finally, there is an SRE or a separate team which takes a corresponding action how to resolve that issue. So those are certain at a high level, certain life cycles which we will see. So, as I said, it starts with continuous development, continuous integration, followed by testing, and then you deploy, so that's continuous deployment, so yeah, CI and CD there. Continuous monitoring, continuous logging, feedback is a alerting thing, where you take feedback from the system or your users and take a responding action on it, and continuous operations, so that's the operation team, which, which basically resolves your uh, production issues or those kind of things, which takes a final form. So we have covered a lot of things. I have been talking a lot about DevOps, not mentioned a single word about WordPress and those things, which is the theme for today. And I see a couple of people here with different face, uh, facial expressions. So someone who is feeling like this. Anyone? For people who are sitting at the back, this guy says, I have no idea what's going on here. And at this point, I'm too afraid to ask because we are halfway through the presentation. If I ask, it's going to be like too shameful. So, anyone with a similar feeling? See, I like audiences like this. It means two things. Either you're too smart, that you understood everything, or it's like, I'm too smart, I couldn't make this clear. So, it's either like all gone or all gone case. But I hope no one is like this. So what happened once is, I had just had a similar presentation. I was talking, uh, uh, I had a much larger audience at that point of time. And uh, when I asked about this kind of feeling, that someone feeling like this, I don't know what people understood out of it. I saw a couple of hands going up and I was like shocked. What the hell? It was like a 45 hour presentation. After 25 minutes, people are telling me that they can relate to this. I was like, really? And then I checked with a couple of them who have raised their hands. That, Do you really feel like this? No, no, we thought that we were asking who did it feel. I said, okay, I just, just rephrase my question and then again check with them. Do you feel that whatever I am asking, like I have been sharing throughout right now, makes sense? Yes, 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 we understood what you are talking about. Like, yeah, you got the point. So since I didn't see any answer, this side I think audience is pretty smart. It's not only WordPress developers, but then yeah, much more mature than WordPress people. So yeah, we go to the life cycle of DevOps. Different stages. Cool, I think that kind of skipped because of the time. So now what we are going to talk about is open source basically. I have in depth uh, for the CI, CD and those things, but that takes much more time, at least 10 more minutes, which we don't have. So I think I am kind of skipped. And now we are going to move into is open source. So since this was about DevOps and open source, marriage may have. A lot of you, when I interacted over lunch and tea and coffee breaks, people told me we are from like small startups. And when you're coming from a small startup or working with a small startup, you won't have bigger pockets, right? Money is a big issue. So definitely enterprise level software doesn't make much of a sense. They come with a cost. So company, bigger companies like the MNCs and all, they can afford to pay and they have associations and partnerships. What about a typical startup? We look for free and cheap projects that are available wherever. So this is a paid version. What is alternative free open source available in the market? If you find something, we will implement it. 
So let's, let's talk about that. Why choose an open source thing? So basically, benefits of open source tools. Um, this is something which I would like to come from. New people, this is not related to DevOps. DevOps, I understand, might not be a core thing, but then, yeah, open source is a common thing. All developers use free teams and everything, right? So what are some of the benefits? Cost saving, definitely yes. No licenses required, all free. What else? Community work, yes, I understand, but then how do you see that community work? What is the benefit for you? Efficient. So yes. that's the way basically we can get the get the benefits of the open source tools. Correct. So I take that as a bigger community means a bigger support. <coughs> when you have enterprise level solutions, you pay for the support. But when you have an open source community, you have a bigger team to support you globally, right? Without any cost. So we will cover those points but yeah, what else? I think those are the things which are already there on the slide, so I'll just revise them for you. What are the points for open source? Come on guys, guys on the back. There is a lady who is trying to take a pic. I am not sure if she is trying to take a pic of mine or if she is chatting with the boyfriend and with the camera on. Was it mine pic that we are trying to take or this right? Or was it like a... Anyways, yeah. Okay, yeah. Cool. And the benefits, yeah. I don't understand. Better quality code, yes. That's the right point, yes. Better quality, better security because if it's coming from a community which has a lot more smart people, smart developers across the globe, so definitely you can talk about security also, but it's a both sided sword. Sometimes we talk about open source and vulnerable softwares, but this time you will take the positive side of it. You can assume the software is used by millions of people, mostly. But yeah, let's cover those things. Could be. So lower software cost, that's what I can say. It's all free, so definitely no cost involved over there. Most of the times, it's an open source version. Try it if it works on your use case. Use it. There is no foundation, there is no licensing fee, and all those things. No hassles attached. No <coughs> vendor locking, and that's an important point. Yeah. Okay. Cool. No vendor locking, as in when you go for a proprietary software, you are dependent on that particular vendor to support your third-party services and requirement, right? In case in future there is a time of need where you want to move out, your entire code is coupled along that one particular thing. And it becomes difficult to move out of that particular vendor. So that vendor nothing thing is there with a uh, license version or uh, non-open source software. But in open source, that is not the case. You have multiple other options where so you don't have to pay. So it's all free. You design your architecture in such a way that in case if needed, you can always move or opt out of it. So I think this was again covered, greater community support, which is free. So you have big community, which is there, and they give you the support, which is all free. Greater flexibility for customization. Since it's open source, you can do all sorts of things on top of it. Add your own wrapper, add your own customization, so much stuff. Which is not the case with the property software. It comes with certain ifs and buts. This is the amount that you pay and this is what you get. You don't have a customization option on top of it. You might get customized softwares, but then you have to extra pay for that. You cannot do it on your own because they will not share the code to you. They'll do it as they are for you as a customer uh, customization experience. This is not the case with open source. It's all open source, it's all free. You can add your own customizations on top of this. Simple license management, that's pretty simple and clear. There is no license to manage for different users, right? It's all free. So that, that headache is all gone. You don't have to think about when to remove the licenses, how much to pay, this year we pay 200 users, next year do we need that, do we don't need that. Those all hassles are all gone. And easy to audit. So it's an open source community. Uh, it's easier to audit an open source software than a proprietary software. You have a lot of limitations over it. So those are some of the top open source tools that have benefits. And not only for like when I'm coming from a DevOps background, it's not only for DevOps or uh, any particular domain, this applies to all. What are the general benefits of an open source tool? Why should we use it or why should we promote it? And now, 
when we talked about the life cycle of DevOps, we talked about CI, CD and different stages, right? For each stage, we will see what are the open source tools available. So DevOps and open source tools. We started with development and I talked about Git and other options. So let's see. So that's something we call as SCM, source code management. So there's Git, SVM, Mercurial, CVS, many more. I mean, these are the ones which I found interesting and I mean, they were on top of my mind. So this is not an exhaustive list. There are many more which are available and you can find something suitable to your case. So that includes a source code management. Next is the CICD. Okay, before CICD, I think there's a configuration management concept. So Puppet Shell have been there for some time. There's something called Ansible. There's Juju. Um, there is salt stack and there is CF engine and many more but I think these are the ones which are prominently used in the market in terms of con configuration management solutions. CICD, I think dev uh, for CICD DevOps, Jenkins is the standard, most of the people use it. I have used something called BuildKite which was also as efficient as Jenkins. In certain ways, a better flexible option than Jenkins. Bitbot, Cruise Control, Travis CI, these are some of the open source that are available for your oh. Just, I'll go to uh, two more slides and that's it, I think I'm done. So this is for your monitoring solutions, Nagios, Sigma, Prometheus, Sensu, Monet. If you want, you can take a picture. I'm just running short on time. These are some of the logging tools which are open source solutions. Gridlock, Logstash, CodeB, Logs.io, Travis CI. And from security, I think that's the last one. From security solutions on it. That's not good. No internet. But didn't have much basically after that. So there were a couple of security solutions that were available. So um, if you want, I mean, I, I'm available outside. You can always come back and talk to me uh, in case there's a requirement on DevOps, cloud, automation, something that you want to consult or know. If you're trying to implement those solutions within your company. Um, so I don't have long time copy of this one. Yeah. But cool guys, thanks for having me here. And it was nice having and interacting with all of you. Hope there is some kind of a takeaway from this session. If you are not aware of DevOps, at least now you have some clarity. In case you knew what is DevOps all about, you have some maturity about it, at least in terms of life cycle and some tools.